Hey everybody, welcome back to Vegan Mesoteric and our continuing series, Model Museum, where I review every single Sega Model 1, Model 2, and Model 3 arcade game in a retrospective fashion that is not a racing game because I did that last year. And if you can't tell, Dinosaurs and Jurassic Park have nothing to do with racing, so we're going to be playing The Lost World Jurassic Park today. It is another awesome light gun game from Sega, and if you know anything about Sega and light gun games, you know they make some of the best. Before we get too far involved though, do me a huge favor, go down below, hit like and subscribe, and ring that notification bell, definitely helps us out. And if you feel so inclined and want to support the channel, we got a Patreon link down below as well. Now right off the top, I'm going to say that while I love this game mechanically and I love a good Sega light gun shooting game, I've never been a gigantic fan of the Jurassic Park franchise. Yes, I've seen the movies, yes I enjoyed them, but it's one of those things, they come, they go, I watch them, and I don't really think much about them. So as far as this thematic match to my interest areas, Jurassic Park 100% isn't my favorite thing in the world. But as far as a light gun game from Sega on Model 3 hardware is concerned, it is another spectacular game, and it's probably one of the harder games on Model 3 in the light gun genre. Now, the events of this game don't really hew very closely towards the film, and there is a special edition version of this game that was released as an amusement cabinet, which apparently hews closer towards the film's narrative. Now, that game does not work in the Supermodel emulator. I've never seen a ROM dump for that game, and that cabinet's basically extinct. But if you've ever played it before, leave me a comment down below. I would be curious. And if you know where there is a Lost World cabinet in the wild, the normal version, leave me a comment as well, because again, I haven't seen this one for probably five to six years. But if you can't tell already, the main name of the game in this one is Shoot Dinosaurs. They are coming fast and furious and they are there to attack you. But you're going to get some not quite quick time events, but quick shooting events. And depending on whether you succeed or fail, your route or something in the game is going to slightly change. Now one thing about The Lost World that I wish Sega had changed a little bit more is you're going to be sitting on the same screen for a little bit too long shooting these little dinosaurs. Sometimes the game basically pauses and it feels like maybe they were trying to artificially elongate the playtime without actually creating any new environments. But it's made up for that when something like a T-Rex comes in and eats somebody out of a jeep, shaking them to death and throwing them to the side while they roar in the camera. This game's got great spectacle and it does about as good of a job as you could in the late 90s of recreating the sensation of the films. Because as this T-Rex is running towards you and you need to shoot those targets to knock her back, it is intense and it is fun. Now I am playing this with a send -in and it works really well. You can play it with a mouse, gun for IR, or any other sort of modern pointing device. If you do want to collect an original arcade board for this, you're going to have to have the right type of monitors because getting sync on a PVM is just not going to be possible for this game. I think it is much better played on Supermodel and that's coming from somebody that collects dozens upon dozens upon dozens of arcade boards. But once we get the T-Rex down, we're going to move on. But I do love how they give you those targets. You're not just going to be able to unload clips into the T-Rex's body. Once you get to a certain stage, there's only going to be certain areas you have to hit. And as we move on, this game has a really funny sense of humor as well. It's not always going to be violent carnivore dinosaurs trying to attack you, the predators. It's also going to be these larger lumbering dinosaurs right here that are trying to stomp you with their feet. Now, I'm no dinosaurologist, that I know it is not the right word, but it sounds funny. So if I don't remember all the dinosaur names, just leave me a comment down below and tell me what they are. Can't remember everything. But the next part, maybe the funniest thing in any Sega game I've ever seen as far as the arcades are concerned, this next dinosaur, you have to shoot the shit coming out of his ass before it hits your jeep or before you run into it. Shoot enough crap, you succeed. Don't shoot enough crap and you're going to fail. It is such a minor moment, but it is so hilarious. Over the first time I saw it, it did give me a good chuckle. You will see that we were able to collect a power up here and now we have a grenade launcher. And the nice thing about Jurassic Park is that it is going to give you different weapons. It's going to be rare that you get them, but when you do, it is on a timer. So you just basically hold down that trigger, hit it as many times as you can, and try to kill as many dinosaurs before you lose it. Because all of the power up weapons are going to be so much better than your main handgun in the game. But again, I just love the action in this game. Everything's moving so fast. Those raptors are just jumping right at you. It 100% works in the context of what you would expect a Jurassic Park arcade game to be like. And this is basically a sequel to the Sega System 32 Jurassic Park. Sega had a license. They did a ton of good things with it, including making an awesome soundtrack with some really good sound effects. Go ahead and listen for like 45 seconds. I'll come back and talk more about the visual presentation, which I do have some thoughts on. But enjoy. Thank you. 
Just a great soundtrack and it does work in context of the game. And I love the different dinosaur designs here. They really do have a good look going. And in this level in particular, with that green kind of murky water and all the fog in the background, I think the game does look really good. But in some spots, even though it is Jurassic Park, some of the models and some of the colors just don't make me fall in love with this game the same way as something like the Ocean Hunter does. Now granted, this was running on a lower spec Model 3 board compared to the Ocean Hunter, which is on step 2.1, but even still, some of the indoor environments just don't seem to be the most inspired things I have ever seen. Sure, we get the stained glass window of a dinosaur, but these environments environments just don't seem to be as big and expansive as you would expect from Sega. Put LA Machine Gun side by side with Jurassic Park here and I feel like this game just kind of lacks a little bit of that over the top shine and polish that Sega is known for. Believe me, comment down below. Maybe I'm just wrong and maybe contextually this is what it should have been. That's the interesting thing when it comes to visuals. So long as the graphics aren't terrible, everyone can have a different opinion on whether or not they think they're amazing or just decent. And in my opinion, Jurassic Park in some areas just looks uh, decent basically is the best way I could put it not great not bad just kind of middle of the road you will see whether we do get the lightning power up here and sometimes when you get power ups the game will slightly frustrate me because it is on a timer based system and half the time we actually have the lightning gun we don't have anything to shoot at sometimes I wish it was a set amount of trigger pulls so you could kind of use that power up as much as you could so long as your aim was good versus the game basically taking 12 to 13 seconds of a 30 second timer giving you nothing to shoot at that's kind of a bummer but this raptor run down this hallway where you have to shoot these different boxes on the wall this game is nothing if it's not intense and action-packed and it is a 10 out of 10 in my opinion as far as the gameplay is concerned even if in some areas i don't love the visuals i have absolutely nothing bad to say about the actual dinosaur shooting mechanic it is just a blast it's some of the best light gun stuff sega did in this generation but i'm curious what your favorite sega light gun game is leave me a comment down below i bet i'm gonna hear a lot of house of the Dead, but i hope i hear other things like lupon the third the shooting i do a video on that and i'll leave a link below if i remember but as we go further into the game, I love that we get stuck right in the middle of this basically repelling. We stop to shoot all of these flying dinosaurs, and I will say that while the diversity isn't huge in a game like this, it gives you just enough different looks at different types of dinosaurs that you don't feel like you've been shooting too many generic raptors in a row. Knock enough birds down here, we're going to be able to move on further into the game. And sometimes contextually this game doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And that is why the Lost World Jurassic Park Special changed some of the levels out and changed some of the bosses out as well. The boss that you're going to see in this area here is not in the special version and that is because it makes absolutely zero contextual sense. It's basically a magical dinosaur but I will show you why ever so shortly. Now as far as the story is concerned, even though it's trying to be part of the film, it makes no sense. Don't worry about it. Shoot dinosaurs until you see the ending. That's all you really need to worry about in the Lost World because the story is just disjointed and you really have no idea what is going on. But this part in here is probably the funniest. When I first saw this, I had absolutely no idea what's going on. But apparently in the world of the Lost World for Sega, dinosaurs can turn invisible. This is a magic dinosaur. He's got special powers. I do not know why he's able to turn invisible. And I think that's why in special they removed this boss and added in a different level. Because honestly, dinosaurs don't turn invisible. Sure, the entire plotline of Jurassic Park is a little bit farcical and nonsensical. But it definitely didn't have invisible dinosaurs. And if it ever starts to then that's probably a problem but i haven't seen the newest movie so who knows what they have done still a great boss battle i just always thought it was funny that the dinosaur was just able to phase in and out of existence not sure if it's invisibility or maybe he's a time traveler and he's jumping different existences we'll never know because he can't talk and we can't ask but i'm going to give you one more sample of the soundtrack because i do love it in this game and i'll come back finish out the video talk a little bit more about the history of the lost world and why i still think it's an amazing game but enjoy we'll meet up at the village.
And if you can't tell already, it's a Sega arcade game, so you know the voice acting has to be absolutely abysmal. And I think that the Jurassic Park voice acting is probably the worst on the Model 3 platform. It doesn't have any cadence to it whatsoever. I can't tell if it's a Japanese speaker trying English or an English speaker not trying whatsoever. But leave me a comment down below and tell me which one you think it was. Now, I can't knock this fight. Honestly, the T-Rex female boss fight is better than the final boss fight in the game because I love that we have this spotlight from the Jeep and we are fighting her in the dark versus when we go to the male version of the boss fight. Still an incredible time, but it doesn't have that same action flair as the female. Sure, we start in the truck, but we end up finishing up in more of a village area and the game slows itself down. I wish they just kept this entire thing one big action chase sequence while you were fighting the T-Rex. I do think that worked a lot better. Now, you're going to love this game more than I will if you're a big fan of Jurassic Park. It's definitely made for fans and people that love the movie franchise and the books and everything else alongside of it are probably going to get more enjoyment out of this. I love this game because it's another awesome action light gun game from Sega and that is my favorite arcade genre of all time. I just like it because it's Jurassic Park, but I don't love it because of that. It's not something that just basically does it for me. Now, if Sega had made an Escape from New York John Carpenter Snake Plissken light gun game, I think that would be a 10 out of 10 even if the game sucked because it's just the genre and sort of thematic content I enjoy. But yeah, if you've never played this game before, you can 100% play it on Supermodel. Right now, there's a few graphical glitches on screen, but otherwise, it is a 100% solid experience. And if you see a captain in the wild, definitely throw some quarters in it because it's not getting any more common. And I'm sure that all of the special cabinets are probably extinct right now. But if you know of one, is tell me down below because I would be very curious to check it out. Even if it requires a flight, maybe I'm going that way. It would be awesome to see. But yeah, Lost World Jurassic Park, awesome boss fight, awesome game. And if you love Jurassic Park, even better than that. Short of that, the T-Rex is dead. We are done and we'll see you next time with more videos. I'll have them throughout the week. Bye-bye.